Hi everyone. Now, I've, this is a request. This is a basically an unusual fly. I'm going to be tying a, a daddy long legs, a pearly daddy. Now, this is a Sid Knight fly. Now, Sid was a professional fly tyre who came up with some really, really good patterns over the years. Uh, unfortunately, Sid's no longer with us. Uh, but the, the the main two flies I remember him most by is the dog, is the dog Nobler, which was a lure, uh, which I may do in another video. Uh, but this is the, the pearly daddy. Uh, now you can see it's got a gold bead. Now it's obviously got weight on it. Uh, and it was fished as a wet fly. But it was. It used to amaze me the number of fish this fly would catch when I was a, a, when I was a fishery manager. And then over the 15 years when I was doing that, I saw this fly catch many times. And uh, especially when things could be quite hard, uh, I could, this fly for some reason seemed to uh, trigger that. Uh, fish to take it and uh, so what I'm going to say, it's going to be the first time I've tied it so uh, as I say it is a request and it's uh, something that you may like to see now you could add a bit more weight to it, a wee bit more lead at the, the head here but I'm going to leave it now that's a 3 mil gold, gold bead um, I'm on a size 10 uh, traditional streamer hook in this case it's a full of mil one now I'm going to start off with tying the fly using a floss this is a fine floss it's a glow bright floss it's a bit damaged there right but uh, this is number 12 which is basically uh, like a, a line green so we're going to tie that in with the, the bead itself I'm just going to build it up a wee bit this will help stop it pulling or stop the bead coming down the shank now I'm just going to continue down the shank touch and turns with it get in line with the point then I'm going to remove the waist as you saw there I'm just going to wind to the barb I'm using these things as a guide and then I'm going to wind back up basically line with the pointer hook again come back down two thirds of the way and then back up and that will give you like a taper or a nice tag light shape now you've got to protect that now I've got some a clear or some UV resin and before I put it on we take the floss out of the way just apply it all the way around to the tag itself and then you want it to run onto the, the hook. This will stop any water getting underneath. That will protect it. Now you could use a varnish, but you'd have to wait till it dried. Obviously the resin will speed that process up. So set the resin on the top and the bottom. And all the way around, obviously. That should do it. Just bringing my floss back now. What I've got here is uh, now you have copper wire, just a UTC copper wire. In this case, this is a small just to rub the fly. Now, it has a pearl body, so what I'm going to do is just catch this on. Now, as you can see, I'm obviously tying, continue tying the fly with the floss. Uh, now, what that'll do is uh, when you use a pearl, you'll see the green through it. Now, I've got the pearl here I'm using. This is a number 12, which is basically a large pearl. And then, take my thread down. You need to tie, you need a thorax length for the, the hackles. Now I'm just going to taper the body a wee bit, so I'm going to come two thirds of the way back down and then come back up. That'll help give you a nice taper. Now you need the room to tie in legs, wings, and the hackle. So what we do then is wind the pearl down. All the way down to this point here. Tie it in. Should do it. Trim away the waist. Straight turn at the back with the copper and then rub the body. Now, being a, oops, being a, uh, lad weight to the fly, uh, this, so don't be shy with it. Obviously, get to the beginning of the thorax then tie it off. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue down to the bead, make sure it's secure, bend and break away the wire, and then tan, or in this case, rusty done. It's a nice colour to suit the, this fly. So I'm going to catch it in, tie, in, tie off the, obviously the floss, take away the waste to the rusty done thread. Now we're going to wind down. To this point at the beginning of the thorax. Now I'm going to tie in some dubbing. 
this is just a blender it's actually hair's mask and fox squirrel that I've blended together quite a coarse dubbing which I, I quite like using so especially in flies like this now I'm putting some dubbing on just at the back here this will help I'm going to be tying in some pre-knotted pheasant tail legs this will help keep them apart spread them out so I've got the pre-knotted pheasant tail legs these ones here now because it's more a wet fly I'm going to exaggerate now normally you'd have three either side so I'm going to go for like four either side so one two three four there we are just because you're pulling it more like a lure I want it to make it a wee bit more noticeable the legs you could stick to three either side and stick to the inset size leg length basically one maybe one and a half maybe two lengths of the the hook just catch them either side of the shank yeah I've missed one just go back where did it come from? my side? no this side just be patient how I did that I don't know now bring it back together check the four there we are get the length Hold them either side of the shank, as I say, just allow the shank to keep them separated and bring it up against the dubbing. I know where it is, there's, there's actually an extra one there, but uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to bring one over and that will balance it up. There we are, so we can basically get the legs there. That's a bit better. Then trim away. Now the wings, I'm going to be using, this is a Cree feather, a Cree is a, from a, an Indian neck I've got, not much left on it so I've had to select a couple, uh, when you lay one on top of the other, so just lay it right on top, you want the wings to the back, of, just slightly by the back of the hook here, just pinch and loop it on the top with a couple of turns, and then just separate them, just make a obviously separate like you would get in a normal wing you want movement in it and then secure them down coming up against them there we are and then trim away the, the waist so I moved a wee bit there but I'm going to put some wax on my thread make sure they're secure take the thread up to the bead and come back down and that should make everything nice and neat and solid. Now I'm going back to the Cree, the slightly bigger feathers here for the, the Hako. Now I've actually got two. And the reason I'm using two is because these are quite weak as a feather. They're not so, a great deal of fibre on it. And as well, the best part of the colour of the fibre is up the top here. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to tie in by the tip just because of that. So make sure that in this case there's two that are lined up. And draw the fibres down together like that, keeping hold of the tips. Just catch them in, two or three turns down, pull the tips back, then come back up. Just obviously tuck them in. Slap your fingers back, and there they are, there's the ends of the tips, sorry. You can then trim them away. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get some more of my dubbing. I'm going to dub front just a wee bit. Just this will control the turns a wee bit better. Much neater if you do that. You can always blend them in. Now leave a space near the, the bead just so you can tie off. There we are. So we've got both together. Just hold the tips here, or the ends, sorry. Fold the back. Now the length of the fibre is up to yourself, it can be short, long, uh, you just you determine how long they're going to be, just about to try and balance the fly. Uh, that's fine, catch them both in together, three or four turns in, I'm going to fold them back because there's plenty of room there, just going to build up the thread turns. 
trim away. And I'm going to tidy this up a wee bit. Put some more of the dubbing. Just lightly onto the thread, just in front here. Just wind the thread, once you've put some on, wind the thread through it. Obviously end right next to the bead. Now to whip finish, just run the varnish along the thread, a good couple of inches down. Now I'm going to wind at least half of that on there. And then I'm going to whip finish. And that will basically tie it in. Got some dubbing there. On my desk. And then whip finish. I've caught one or two fibres there because of that. Trim them away. And there we go. And that's Sid Knight's Pearly Daddy. Um, I'm just going to bring out a wee bit of the dubbing here. Just. Now as I say, this fly used to amaze me when I worked in the fishery. Just in how well it worked. Uh, and when it worked, it, it basically, uh, I would say, when other things were struggling, to be honest with you, uh, it's a great pattern to have. I mean, uh, as I, I never ever tied it. Uh, it was just, the customers would come in, say, How, how'd you go on? Caught in the Sid Knight's uh, Pearly Daddy. And uh, then I went, geez, when things were going bad, then it's the type of flies I see. You could always save a day, catch one or two fish. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it is a good, it's a good fun fly to tie. As I say, Sid was famous for other patterns, so I may look at doing one or two more. So anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time.